guys, Derek from Team Shift here with Anthony from Team Shift. And he went, what'd you go with today? Undefeated. Undefeated with... Spiral. Spirals. Ooh, the Spiral Master. Come I didn't even to... have to buy a kit to get all the shit. Yeah, you, never, <laughs> you only needed a couple cards. So yeah. how did you think the deck went today? Or what did you think with Double Helix? Like, it's You can't even play the deck without Double Helix. It's like, so good. Like... At the OTS, it was fun, but here, this was actually good. Like, any time I had, any time I had, like, two monsters, I pretty much had a play. Which is opposed to not being able to make anything before. But, um, today I played against, round one, I played against Paleo. Um, I want to say we went to game three, but I won. Game, round two, I played against, um, Light Sworn, beat that. Round three, I played against. Uh, I played against Pendulum Edition. I beat that. I played against. Um, ooh, I can't remember the last thing was, but I remember I, I, I just beat everything today. Um, there were like a couple times when I drew weird, but usually you can just play out of it and still go through with it. But for the profile, for the list, yeah, let's see. Let's um, gotta flash the shift. Mm -hmm. So play three Super Agent, kind of self-explanatory. If you don't play three, like don't play the deck because. You just need this to always have a super agent on the field with the, for the name, for popping back row, which is extremely relevant, and also the stats are just amazing. Um, one sleeper, because playing more than one in a 40 card list as opposed to OCG where they play 60 and 2, um, I think this is just better to play one of because you'll see it and you can't always summon it, and once you drop it, you win. Like you, I've never lost a game where I had sleeper on the field. And then a master plan because the combo where you can just summon it and then search three cards and keep your turn going and doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, three quick fix. Um, not much to say. I mean, it's just it's just good, honestly. Uh, it's one of the best cards in the deck. Search your deck a hundred times in a turn. Yeah. I used not to... once per turn is broken. Like. Mm -hmm. And then nothing about really any spirals once per turn. At least any of the little guys. Um, something I like about. Three drone as opposed to two now is you can use it to return your double helix back to the extra deck. You can put a super agent back in your hand. You can put a tough from your grave back in your hand because it counts as super agent in the graveyard. And the the uh, boosting is really relevant. Um, two last resort. People play one. Some people play two. I like two just because protecting your stuff is so good. And especially especially the fact that like you don't always have it on a sleeper. So if you don't put it on sleeper and you have it on something else, you could search it later for you know to do it again. So, and, and sending cards that aren't relevant to the graveyard to attack directly makes for the best combo plays. Uh, to go for, I don't want to draw a million copies of this, but it is really good, obviously, it's for combos. Um, one uh, doodle. Toaster strudel. One toaster strudel. Uh, the strudel, the broken ass dragon that summons itself that I never used all day. Um, but it's fun though. I milled it off a of prince. I played against Exodia, that's what it was. I played against Exodia, oh. creamed on that. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I milled this off a of Princess Sprite, and then you just continue your combo again, and it's stupid. Uh, a DD Crow, because you could search it off of the Lyralist card. Uh, two Ash and a Max. Um, just kind of some hate. Then for the spells, you got three Resort and one Dragon's Ravine. I side these out a lot. I've sided out Deshrudo and Dragon Ravine a lot throughout the day, but I think it's good that you can do that because it's just better. They're good targets, mm -hmm. but they're good to have in the deck as well because they're combo extensions. Yeah. Um, and then three Terraforming because if you don't play it, you're never going to see your Resort. Mm -hmm. um, and I play two of the cars and one Fully Armed and one Assault. Um, some people play one, but I don't recommend that just because having this multiple times is broken. And there's not much else to say about it. And then this is for your combos. I drew a couple times off of this, which is really nice. And this is amazing. This is like wins you games. And people don't play it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they don't play it because it's a thousand extra attacks. So you can boost over anything, especially outside of your drone. Um, more attack is good. A non targeting banish any card on your opponent's side of the field after a non target banish the monster you kill by battle is super broken, especially because it outs Beals, it outs any, any, anything really. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. So you got to play that. Um, and then the other spells are just combo spells. I don't play anything besides combo cards in the deck. It's just one for one, Foolish Burial Goods, the regular Foolish Burial, two Double Summon because three is inconsistent, and three Machine Duplication. I felt like it was better just to play a combo game one for the most consistent. I, I love playing the most consistent game one I can to do what I want to do. Then games two and three, I just tweak my deck to like whatever I'm playing against. Um, but the one for one, every time you have it, it's just broken. Goods is nice to extend. Burial, you know, send your quick fix, send your drones, send your super agents, send anything. Obviously, if you play this and quick fix is amazing, this and quick fix is even better. And then for the traps, there's those, the hot three. Uh, 
utility wire and rescue. I mean, if you have this set, you, and on top of your board, your opponent usually will just scoop because they can't out it. And then this is really nice. There was, there was just a lot of times where I had one in the grave, one on the field, and I was just adding things back. Holy shit. People are like, you can add it. They'll like, warning a quick fix, I'll add it back to my hand, I'll normal summon it or something like that. And they're like, uh, what do I do? And then they just lose. Um, but anyway, on to the, uh, the extra deck. The best card that came out is Double mm -hmm. Helix. Um, oh, yeah. It's summon anything or add it to your hand. So mm -hmm. if you have your zones occupied, don't forget you can add to your hand from your deck or your graveyard. So dumb. They killed your sleeper. No problem. Yeah. Get it right back. So it's really dumb. Um, then we play one Proxy, one Ib, Abby. Abby, the World Chalice. Yep, and this is actually really relevant. There was a lot of times where I had this link to this and Sleeper, and my opponent would just scoop. I played one, a Cosmic Magician, just because um, you can make it with like quick fixes, especially if you have like a Kaiju in your hand. You go Kaiju, point it over here, summon this here, and then bounce the Kaiju back, Kaiju another one of their monsters, and keep going, which is so stupid. Um, the one, Dicho Talker. Yeah. Uh, holy moly, this card put in a lot of work all day. This plus this, plus this usually you don't lose. It was actually this link to this link to Sleeper, and it's just so stupid. Ningrisu is really good. I used that to beat uh, Light Sworn because they couldn't mill. Um, I would just send their Minerva to the graveyard, and they couldn't do anything. And then we played two Firewall. I went into Firewall like once, and when I had it, it actually it just outright won me the match. Um, I played one Boral Load Dragon. If you don't know what it does, it's untargetable by monsters. Make your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack once per turn. I think it's during either player's turn. Yeah. Um, and it's you. they can't respond to that. And then if you attack something with this, you can non-target steal it and put it in a zone it points to. And you keep it until the end of your next end phase. And then just send it to the graveyard. Free. Like, it's yeah. free. You make it, you win. Uh, I play one Coral because if you open uh, Gofu plus Quick Fix, you can do plays with that. And you go into Coral Dragon, you search the Big Red, you put the Big Red on it, bring it back, and then you make Ancient Fairy Dragon, and you keep going. Ancient Fairy is amazing because you just get to search a million things, and uh, the Arata kills every field spell, so it's good. And then you play one Babushka, or Bakushka, whatever. It's nice because you can make a stun board with the deck, and any stun board with mm -hmm. the deck is usually pretty yeah. overpowered anyway, especially with the stuff you do. Especially since you're making like giant Link fields, like <laughs> this oh my doesn't God. turn them to defense, though. So you just have like the Link monsters and yeah, that. it's actually ridiculous. Especially too, like if you're not going to end your board with Sleeper and you just end with this instead, who cares? Like yeah. who cares what they have? They lose. Um, and we also play one Princess Sprite for the combos. I mean, I made this so many times, and usually it'll just draw you into the most ridiculous things, or you can mill Doodle and dick on him with Doodle. Um, this, I did some really cheap, disgusting plays with this, where I would, um, it's, if you don't know, just detach, search for any, uh, level one wing beast, so you search, D you, you search DD Crow. But, what I'll do is, um, what I did against Paleo was he had Dupe Frog in defense mode, and I had a big board, and I'm like, oh, I need a little bit more damage, so I made this, searched my DD Crow, went to battle phase, swung into his, uh, Dupe Frog, this thing was at, like, I think, uh, 300 attack, or 200 attack. Um, I took uh, I took 18, but this also makes your opponent take the damage too. So I just made it so we both took 1800, popped his uh, dupe frog with uh, sleeper, and then just proceeded to just swing for game. And because the extra damage it won, I've done that a couple times. I think I did it against Lice one too. Actually, as a matter of fact, I just oh I did it against Pendulum. I did it against Pendulum where I just, oh it wasn't against you. <laughs> I did it against Pendulum. I'll just crash into their cards and then they'll take a bunch of damage. They'll be like oh I, I guess I'm not safe anymore and I lose. Um, from the side though, um, just some hate was drolls. Reaper, in case I went against the other Spiral player who I didn't play, but I would have definitely beat. So, oh. you know, misplay City over there. <laughs> just fucking. I'm just kidding. I'm, we're we're friends. I Going like to, into I Time like City. Time City. Time City. <laughs> um, I also played uh, Gamma Seal, which kind of coincides with the Akashic Magician choice mm -hmm. that I made. I like it a lot. I mean, it's sure it's like you have to commit a bit of space for it, but it's just worth it. And then Tough. When you call Tough right, I mean, you don't main this. You side it because it's just so strong. Um, I also played. Regeki, Dark Hole, yep. Regiki, Dark Hole. Um, board wipes are important. Board wipes are so important in this deck. Then you play Cosmics just to out things, which is really relevant. And then double Dimensional Barrier. And my little text I played in case I want to get some Magic Gummer Lullabies. If you call their sleeper and you joke and say, do you want to summon it to my field? And they say, sure. You take that opportunity because it summons ignoring the summoning conditions. So when they say, no, you can't summon except by its own effect, you say, it ignores it. And they lose. But that's what I used today. Honestly, the deck just performed so well. There were times, I mean, I think this deck is naturally bound to brick, no matter how consistent you make the deck. Any deck with just as many combo cards as, as it plays is just, you're going to brick uh -huh. every once in a while. But 
um, it doesn't matter because as soon as you open the one card to get you out of it, your board literally just evolves into I don't yeah. lose ever. So, mm -hmm. what do you think you're gonna change? Do you think you're gonna change anything? Um, what I might change about it, I might move like Foolish Burial around, or I might, uh, I might even take out Destruo, uh, the Destruo engine. Just I don't like, I, I didn't use it all day, and there was never a time where I thought it was better than anything else that I could have been using. Mm -hmm. Where it's already the deck's already 43, yeah. so maybe you just didn't break. <laughs> Maybe I just didn't. Maybe I just, maybe uh, just never break. Yeah. Um, maybe I would just cut it to 42 or 41 just to mm -hmm. try and make it yeah. um, a little more consistent um, in terms of so I can always see the things I need. But there's really not much to do with it. I mean, it's just it's just really strong. And no matter what, going into any matchup, you might think the deck is frail because it is. But if as soon as your opponent does one thing wrong, you just capitalize off it, come back, and you just crush them. They mm -hmm. can't win. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Thank you.